Some people think horror movies and TV shows aren't serious because they believe they have bad special effects, scripts, and acting. However, this is misunderstanding. Horror is a diverse genre with many interesting ways to create imaginative worlds full of fear. From a quality perspective, horror not only renews but also significantly improves. Exploring the horror landscape of 2023, we have compiled a list of top 15 performances. While not earning Oscars, these performances showcase the dramatic range that horror encompasses in its various forms. But before we dive into the details, subscribe to this Cine Wizard and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on the latest news and reviews. Still been saying stuff. You mean saying stuff? At number 15, we got Lizzie Kaplan, Cobweb. Cobweb, a movie by Samuel Burden, is about a boy named Peter who lives in a very private and overly protective home. His parents act strangely and sometimes violently which makes people think they might be mistreating him. When Peter hears mysterious sounds behind the walls of his home, he becomes very curious. His teacher notices that something might be wrong at Peter's home. The real truth is scarier than you might think, but it's different from what Peter's parents want you to believe. It's not an ordinary scary movie. Lizzie Kaplan plays Carol, Peter's mom. She always seems worried because of Mark, her husband and Peter's dad. Kaplan's acting is not very subtle and it includes many common things seen in scary movies where women are portrayed as very frightened. But the big surprise comes when you watch the whole movie. You will be shocked to find out that Carol's actions were almost justified. Her interaction with Anthony Starr, who plays Mark, is excellent. They both balance their characters well, hiding something important. The movie reveals a secret that could be much worse than what they are ready to do to keep it safe. Cobweb is a horror film from 2023 that didn't get as much attention as it deserves. What is that? The banging. At number 14, we got Pedro Pascal, The Last of Us. The Last of Us is a TV show on HBO based on a video game from 2023. The story is about the world facing a big sickness caused by a smart kind of fungus. This fungus can infect people and make them turn into zombies. But this show is not like other zombie shows. The first season follows Joel and Ellie, two survivors trying to escape from the danger. Joel has to take Ellie to a safe place because she's immune to the sickness and might have the key to fighting the enemy. This TV show proved that making shows based on video games can be good. The acting of Pedro Pascal, who plays Joel, and his partner Ali, played by Bella Ramsey, is crucial to the show's success. Their story of trying to stay alive is very interesting. Joel has a lot of pain from the past, and Ellie learns about how the world used to be 20 years ago through his memories. Pedro Pascal doesn't show off his acting skills too much. Instead, he becomes a quiet and tough man, dealing with his inner struggles. This is true to the video game's character, and we hope this show continues to be faithful in the upcoming second season. At number 13, we got Vivian Lyra Blair, The Boogeyman. In 2023, a movie called The Boogeyman, based on a Stephen King story, was made by Rob Savage. The project faced some problems during development but got a green light again after Disney bought Fox. The movie turned out to be one of the best that year. It's about a therapist named Will Harper, who is trying to heal from losing his wife. One day a patient named Lester Billings shows up and brings something with him that causes trouble for Will and his two daughters, Sadie and Sawyer. Vivian Lyra Blair plays Sawyer Harper in this PG-13 horror film. Sawyer is going through a tough time dealing with grief and something strange invading their lives. Blair's performance is different from the usual scary child roles. He takes a dramatic turn that contrasts well with Sadie's more explosive behavior. Sawyer's backstory is compelling and Blair, as an actor, brings a realistic and down-to-earth approach to the emotional challenges of the character. You're both having these manifestations. What is this supposed to be? At number 12, we got Sophie Wilde, Talk to Me. 
Talk to Me is a cool Australian horror movie that tells the story of Mia, a 17-year-old dealing with the sadness of her mom's death. Mia, along with her friends, goes to a party where they do something they shouldn't. Play with a preserved hand to talk to ghosts. But things get crazy when they all get possessed and Mia's actions put everyone in danger. It's one of the scariest movies of the year. In the movie, Sophie Wilde plays Mia, the main character. Mia gets addicted to the excitement of using the hand and ends up risking everyone's safety just because she's a curious teenager. She goes from being a bit selfish and dramatic to becoming a victim who carries the whole movie on her shoulders. Mia also holds the key to fighting the danger in the film. Talk to Me is Wilde's first big movie and she does a great job bringing Mia to life. Still been saying stuff. You mean saying stuff? At number 11, we got Bruce Greenwood, The Fall of the House of Usher. Mike Flanagan made a spooky Netflix show called The Fall of the House of Usher based on Edgar Allan Poe's world. If you love Allen's stories, you will really enjoy this one. It's about Roderick Usher, a big shot leader with a lot of money, but some dark things happen. The Usher kids start dying one by one and Roderick thinks it's connected to a promise he made to his sister a long time ago. In this Netflix show, Bruce Greenwood plays Roderick Usher, even though he joined the cast at the last minute because of some issues with another actor. Greenwood does a great job. He takes on the tough role of a guy who comes late to a party that's already started. The actor's experience is important to show Roderick's mixed up feelings as he goes through some unbelievable stuff. Leading a show with a big secret at the start can be tricky, but Greenwood adds a touch of fear and guilt in the middle of all the chaos. Comes after us, we will exhaust our arsenal until the threat's neutralized. At number 10, we got Jaguin Phoenix, Bo is Afraid. Ari's Astor's Bo is Afraid is about Bo Wasserman, a man who's always been scared because of wrong information from his mom. Even as a grown-up, he still feels the strong effect of this fear. When he hears about his mom's very sad death, anxious Bo decides to go back home for her funeral. During the trip, he has to confront each of his fears, literally facing them. Bo is afraid didn't get as much attention as other popular movies by Ari Aster. Even though it's a bit different from his usual style, blending existential horror with dark comedy, it's still interesting. Adding Phoenix to the mix makes the film even more intense than expected. Phoenix, never staying in his comfort zone, turns a supposedly easy task into an unpredictable horror journey. You will realize that we all have a little bit of bow in ourselves, making the adventure quite chilling. Many miles, dozens will become hundreds, hundreds will become thousands. At number 9, we got Rachel Wise, Dead Ringers. In 2023, they turned one of David Cronenberg's strange and scary movie into a TV show. The show is called Dead Ringers. It's about Beverly and Elliot Mantle, who are twin doctors in Manhattan. But these doctors are not good people. They want to change how babies are born and their plans get weirder as the show goes on. The story reveals their twisted ideas, sociopathic actions, and strange behaviors. It's a show that didn't get enough attention but deserves it. You might wonder how they make a new version of this story. The original movie had Jeremy Irons and had a dark and scary feel. Changing the story to focus on female characters wasn't easy, but the person in charge, Alice Birch, did a great job. She kept the important parts while getting rid of things that wouldn't work today. This change created a different mood in the show. Rachel Wise, who plays the identical twins, brings a unique approach. She shows them as two sides of the same coin, falling into a world of paranoia and twisted ways of thinking. It's a shift in tone that works well because of Wise's interesting acting. They're both brilliant, they're both liabilities. We are extraordinary. At number 8, we got Natalia Solian in Hussera, the Bone Woman. Valeria really wants to have a baby. She turns to religion even though she doesn't usually practice it. Her family is close-knit and spots her, 
Finally, Valeria and Rol become parents, but strange things start happening to Valeria. Alongside a personal crisis from her past, Valeria has to delve into dark magic to protect what's growing inside her. This movie, directed by Michelle Garza, is a powerful film in Spanish. It carefully explores folklore, religion, and the mix of desperation that Valeria faces to solve her problems. Valeria is in a tough situation where being a mom is not the main focus. She sees scary things, but she stays strong while others doubt her. Natalia Solyan, the young actress, does an amazing job. Her physical performance is important for the story, but it's not just about moving her body in strange ways. It's about showing a woman's struggle with doubt. Her eyes tell the whole story without words. At number 7, we got Dave Batista, Knock at the Cabin. In the movie Knock at the Cabin from 2023, there's a family vacationing in the countryside. Eric and Andrew are Wen's dad, and they are enjoying their time in a nice cabin. But things take a crazy turn when four strangers show up at their door. These strangers say someone in the family has to sacrifice another person to save the world. At first, Eric and Andrew don't believe these strange people, but when they see the news reporting the apocalypse on TV, they start to think maybe they should listen. Dave Batista, a former professional wrestler, plays Leonard, the leader of the group that shows up uninvited. Leonard is making really strange demands. Usually, Batista plays characters who use their big muscles, but in this movie by M. Night Shyamalan, he is different. He doesn't need to fight physically, and he seems like a thoughtful and maybe embarrassed guy. Batista's acting is so good that viewers might think he's not the bad guy they thought. Maybe he's just trying to save the world in his own way. At number 6, we got Mia Goth, Infinity Pool. In the movie Infinity Pool, James Foster and his wife M are on a super fun vacation on a faraway European country. Their resort is amazing and has everything you could imagine. One day, they meet another couple on vacation, Gabby and Alban. These new friends invite James and M to do something different, but it turns out they end up doing something really wrong. And in this country, when you do something wrong, you have to pay for it. But here's the catch, you don't get punished, instead, scientists make a clone of you and that clone gets punished for your crimes. The director of the movie is Brandon Karnenberg and it stars Alexander Skarsgård. Mia God plays Gabby, who is both flirty and a bit freaky. This role adds to Mia God's cool contributions to horror movies and it feels like a natural continuation of a scary character she has played before. Gabby is unpredictable and exciting, and she adds to the creepy world that James can't really entrusted in. If you like weird and shocking horror, Infinity Pool with Mia Goth will totally blow your mind. Maybe think of it as a gift. It's like a new skin working into place. At number 5, we got Caitlyn Dever, No One Will Save You. Brian Duffield's No One Will Save You is about Brian, a young woman who lives alone in a big house in a remote area. People in the nearby town treat her like an outsider for some reason. One night, Brian realizes that her house is being invaded. She panics and jumps out of bed only to discover that the invaders are aliens from another planet. The rest of the story is all about Brian doing everything she can to survive. This amazing sci-fi horror movie stars Caitlin Dever in her best role yet. Even though there's very little talking in the movie, only a few words are said, Dever uses her expressions and physical acting to show Brian as both someone who needs help and a hero fighting for survival. The movie takes a surprising turn in the third part that might not be for everyone, but Dever's performance is fantastic and shows how good she is at playing different kinds of characters. It's one of the best performances of the year. At number 4, we got Elisa Sutherland, Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise is another movie in the series created by Sam Raimi. It directly follows the story from Alvarez's 2013 remake of the original film. The movie is about a family in LA 
that experiences an earthquake, accidentally summoning demons. These demons possesses Ali, who is the mother of the children and Beth's sister. Evil Dead Rise is easily one of the best horror films of the year. A standout performance in the horror genre of 2023 is Alisa Sutherland's role in Evil Dead Rise. Alisa fully embraces the role of a possessed mother, portraying the darkest version of that character. She convincingly portrays the destruction of her own children and the loss of her humanity. What makes it even more impressive is that you believe every intense and violent moment of Sutherland's performance as the film's antagonist. Without her, the movie wouldn't be as impactful. You'd be a good mom someday, honey bear. Oh, yeah. At number 3 we got Anthony Starr, Cobweb. Samuel Burden's film Cobweb is unique in having multiple characters on this list, and this is no accident. The film relies heavily on its unexpected twist, aiming to divert the audience's attention from the actual threat. In Cobweb, the key to this diversion lies in the characters of Carol and Mark, who are Peter's parents. Anthony Starr takes on the role of Mark, engaging in a power struggle between Peter's innocence and Carol's nurturing values as a mother. Despite his monstrous nature, Mark is a leader in his own right. Starr excels in portraying villains, and while audiences may be familiar with his role as Homelander in The Boys, a notorious antagonist, it's the subtle nuances, like his lack of smiling, that make Mark a truly sinister character brought to life. The banging. At number 2, we got Sarah Snook, Run Rabbit Run. Run Rabbit Run unfolds the tale of Sarah and Mia. A mother and daughter whose lives take a turn when Mia reaches 7 years old. The catalyst is a rabbit that appears on their doorstep, triggering unusual behavior in Mia reminiscent of something from Sarah's past. To avoid spoilers, we will pause here, urging you to experience one of the most impactful horror films of the year. Despite the film's intense scares, it might seem that Snook's performance opportunities are limited. However, the key lies in the narrative's trajectory. Sarah is compelled to reflect on her past, prompting Snook's character to transition from a skeptical mother to someone grappling with self-doubt in her parenting abilities while confronting an improbable challenge. The conclusion of Run Rabbit Run will linger in your thoughts long after the credits roll. Very good. At number 1, we got Joe Bird, Talk To Me. Talk To Me is a surprising Australian film from 2023 that delves into the consequences of teenagers getting hands on the magical object, allowing them to explore otherworldly realms known as the Further. At the center of the story is Mia, a reckless teenage girl who causes chaos among her group of friends, especially impacting Riley, the younger brother of her friend Jade. As the film concludes, leaving viewers with emotional scars, the anticipation of the upcoming sequel grows particularly regarding Riley's fate. The film depicts Riley's descent into a dark realm of consciousness, where malevolent forces can physically harm him beyond recognition. Joe Bird, the young actor portraying Riley, delivers a chilling performance, navigating through unspeakable acts with eerie realism. Talk To Me takes an unforgiving approach, transforming into a serious film with a blood-curdling portrayal of a victim under the control of an unimaginable monster. What if we open the door but we didn't shut it? Still been saying stuff. You mean saying stuff? The horror genre continues to evolve, offering a diverse range of performances that challenge misconceptions and showcase the dramatic prowess of its actors. These 15 performances from 2023 exemplify the genre ability to captivate audiences with compelling narratives and characters, proving that horror is a serious and ever-improving facet of cinema. For more videos like this, subscribe to the Cine Wizard and press the bell icon to get notifications.